Good, good, good morning and welcome to our reflection for this week. Our reflection for this week is around um, the relationship of David and Absalom. Um, it's, it's, it's a unique relationship. Um, but it, normally when a, a father or when married couple uh, learn that they're having a new baby, their their whole life and focus changes. I mean, responsible couples anyway. We know there are some who are wantonly um, careless or, or absentee fathers and things like that. But 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 for those who are really into the future uh, of their children, the reason why couples have children is so that you have somebody who carries on after you you have left this planet and gone on somebody who takes over the baton of life and carrying on the 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 the, the, the responsibility of, of, of the heritage of the family tree um down the line and so most of the time the 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 Birth of a new child is greeted with um, most of the time with with joy, and the reason why um, couples have children is so that the the child comes to share their joy, comes to share this um, joy and this uh, the, whatever they they are experiencing in their relationship, so that the child comes to be. Uh, uh, an ice on the cake, an icing on the cake, um, icing on the cake. Some people, and I know, have unplanned and unwanted rela- um, um, children, which which is sad uh, and is quite um, what's the word? Hurt, uh, painful. Um, but where the child is planned and expected and celebrated, um, such a child should be a source of joy. Amen? And so, um, I, and I believe to all intents and purposes that David had his children, every one of them, um, enjoy. Uh, uh, and uh, expectation. And you say to me, um, Pastor Sam, why do you say that? And I say, just look at the, the, the his reaction to the the, 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 the child, uh, uh, the seed that came out of his relationship of him and Bathsheba and how he was in um, ash, uh, sackcloth and ashes and crying out to God uh, to, to save this child uh, and fasted and refused to eat. So it, it, in a way that should give me a glimpse of how David valued his children. And, and maybe he, he, from the account I read in the Bible, as a father, maybe he was too soft. Maybe he loved his children too much and wrapped them in cotton wool. And therefore, when when there was misbehavior with Tama, he as a father didn't put his foot down and bring discipline in the household as a father should. And therefore, it, it, it gave Absalom some kind of impetus to, to carry on in impudence. And that's a lesson to all of us. And unless you deal, you nip, um, what's the word? Um, stubbornness and um, um, affronting authority in the bad. Unless you 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 deal with it in the early stages, it will come back and bite you. Unless you. You, 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 you instill the principles of righteousness, truth, love, joy into and sow it intentionally into that relationship of father and child, you, you, it will come back and bite you. And so when such things are absent, then the, the relationship is skewed. 
and, and you don't quite know what to make of what your stake the relationship is built on. Is it built on on, on love? Is it built, built on respect? Is it built what 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 is this? Amen. And so we find David in Psalm three writing this. Amen. Psalm three. I like I like, I love David because David when David gets into trouble, David goes into writing. When David is on the run, he goes into writing. When David is confused, David goes to God. When David is uh, feels his misery, David goes to God. Uh, he listens to God. When David feels he he he's missed it, he listens to God and goes to God. Uh, cre- creating me a new heart, he says in, in Psalm fifty one. Amen. But in Psalm 3, here's what it says. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, O Lord, are assured around me. My glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call out to the Lord. And he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I would not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked from the Lord comes come at deliverance. May your blessings be on your people, O oh Lord. Amen. And when you read this psalm, you think David is writing about some kind of foreign terrorist king. You, uh, you think David is writing about a king or somebody who he is at war with. And just for the record, David is the only king in the history of Israel who never lost a battle. Not one. Amen. Never lost any battle. But then the, 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 those victories came at a cost because when he wanted to build a temple for God, God said, your hands are too bloody, David. You, 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 you can't build me a temple. Let your son do it, which is why Solomon took the baton. But here's the thing. When you hear David say, many assail me on every side, thousands on every side, you're thinking of some Philistines, Malachite. You're thinking about the the uh, Goliath or some other kind of um, foreign invasion but no this psalm was written <laughs> by david the second time he was on the run two times in his life two times the first one when he was running away from king saul amen and I went to Gav and they recognized him and then he started running away from Gav. Amen. And went to the cave of Adullam. That's the first time. There again, David wrote fantastic Psalms there. But here, as we see David, this is the second time. This is when David is on the run and and gets, ends up in a cave. And actually, here is where David was so thirsty that he wanted he wanted water. And 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 and, and he couldn't get water. And um, the Bible says that some men volunteered to go and get him water. And when they came back, those men risked their life. And David said. Wow, this water is too precious. And he said, I can't drink it. I, the, 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 the cost of this water is such that it's only God who is deserving of it. 
he poured it out as a libation, as a, an offering to God. Are you with me? As an offering to God. Uh, but it's, it's during this time that he writes this, the, the, the psalm, Psalm 3, that we sing, For thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You, O Lord, are my glory and the lifted up of my head. Amen. And so he, he but it is his own son, Absalom, is chasing him. No other person. And his own general, Ahitophel, has now aligned himself to Absalom. Can you imagine a baby you looked after? You changed the nappy. You 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 fed. Now you you've reached a point in your life where you can't even afford water. You are on the run. This child wants to kill you. Hallelujah. What do you do? What do you do? This is your own blood. This is your own blood. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the world we live in is a mysterious one. There is King Solomon. David's son says, there's nothing new under the sun. Amen? It will, it, it will come again. Now, listen, Jesus said, uh, at the end time, the Bible says that um, father will be against child, and child will be against father, daughter against mother, mother against daughter. So there is, there is, there is this thing that we have to fight, that all of us carry in ourselves, the possibility of the bomb that will blow us apart. You with me? That all of us carry for us the seed. The seed that if we do not develop and train and invest in well, it will turn to be your distraction and my distraction. That's why we have to invest in our children. Ah, because, 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 because if it's an enemy that you, 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 you won't think twice before blowing them apart. If you are the warring type. And if it's your own son, what do you do? If it's your own daughter. <laughs> I pray that we won't get there. But some of us would rather detonate the the explosive on ourselves rather than destroy that which will stand to be our future. Are you with me? It's, 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 this is one of the most heart-wrenching psalms in the Bible. Apart from Psalm 22 where Jesus calls out and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The relationship of a father and a child and then the son, the bondage that this, that, that, that this seed in you that you carry could turn around and hunt you down. That you who used to hunt bread to put food on the table become the, the hunted Hello. Hello. By no stranger, but by your own flesh and blood. There's a man there, there's a man there's brothers and sisters. Ah, because that when the Bible says a house that is, and Jesus said it, the house that is divided against itself cannot stand. What do you do when your own flesh and blood turns against you? <laughs> David never lost a battle. And yet, instead of standing and fighting, he knew that if it stood and fight, he would blow his... He, the Absalom would be gone. It would be nothing. So he turned his back and ran. Sometimes as a father... 
Even if you know that you hold the upper hand, turn your back and run. Turn your back and run. Let heaven, let heaven decide what, what the next page. And David was very, very experienced in battle. Don't get me wrong. He, this was the man who brought Goliath down. This was the man who, who said to Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Goliath was bellowing, Absalom was no taller than any Goliath. In height, in shape, or whatever, in stature, he was nowhere near Goliath. But David turned and ran from his own son. He turned to right and cried out to God. Listen, children, don't let your parents cry out to God. Don't let the parent cry out to God. Because it is the Lord that giveth, and it is he who taketh. Obey your parents and the Lord, the children. As long as they are only carrying forward that with the Lord, doing in the middle and the center of the will of God, as long as they are instructing you to be able to continue from where they left off, humble yourself. No matter how strong, maybe you are the one who's been going to the gym every day and your, your dad is losing strength. Even if in his early days, it seemed like he was unreasonable, and maltreating you. This is not, there is not in his old age that you pay back. Let God deal with him. If that old man cries out to God, you are in trouble. Honor your mother and your father is the only commandment with a promise. No matter how strong you are, no matter how intellectual you are, no matter how clever you are, don't you dare, don't you dare humble yourself. Your father may not have even gone, have a schoolmate or gone to school. He may have studied during the night or an illiterate by the fact that he was able to look after you and you to be better and more educated than him means that he's a success. What about you? When your time comes, what would you leave behind? What would be your legacy? At least that your foolish, uneducated father has left the world an intelligent son who may change the world. What about you? Well, God bless you as you meditate on this profound psalm. We'll talk again next week.